Lifestyle can be a big factor in your recovery after an illness, especially when it comes to people with acute respiratory distress syndrome. Saray, standing by with more. That's right, Glenn. I'm here with Dr. Samuel Brown with our Good For Utah partner, Intermountain Medical Center. And we're talking about a new IMC study that looks at the recovery of patients with ARDS. Thank you so much for joining us. A fascinating topic. First of all, what is ARDS and what is the hope out there after this study? Acute respiratory distress syndrome. They used to call it double pneumonia or shock lung. It's frightening, terrible lung injury such that you're fighting for your life on a life support system. You might get into a car accident. That's another one. Car accident. Those people that had that swine flu a few years ago, they commonly ended up with ARDS. It really means your lungs so sick that you can't survive without that ventilator, their respirator, or lung life support system. So here's what's interesting. You say, okay, someone can um, recover after that, but not so fast. You still may have ARDS. Well, ARDS used to almost always be fatal. We've been working hard for the last 30 years, and now more and more people survive. And we used to say, you've survived, great, see Fine. you later. Right. But this research and other research before has demonstrated that it's very hard to recover. And they have what's called post-intensive care syndrome which can be haunting, PTSD, weakness, can't breathe, depression, anxiety, memory troubles. It's really hard for people. So this used to be a death call. Now you're saying people survive this. Yes, absolutely. It's one of the great miracles of modern medicine in the 21st century. And tell me how and how can it be treated? So the way you treat it now is careful attention to the life support, antibiotics, sometimes you need a little bit of surgery. That's all done in the intensive care unit. We've gotten pretty good at that. What we haven't done as good a job at though is supporting people during the recovery afterwards. When they're out of the hospital. Out of the ICU, mm. out of the hospital, trying to find, you know, they may not have memory of what happened. They may have been in a coma. And so they, they were healthy and then they wake up and they're not healthy and their memory doesn't work and they have flashbacks and they can't sleep and they don't know what to do with themselves. People who smoke, what would you say to that? That's also a contributing factor. Well, that's something we found in this big research study that was just published and that's that the people that are at greatest risk mm. for this difficult recovery are people that are currently smoking. So I know you've been nagged a million times. I want to be kind and respectful, but you got to stop the smoking. You just got to stop. And what would you tell people? You have to be very cognizant of how you're feeling, your body, especially after a traumatic injury. I think you've got to be open to telling the people around you that you haven't recovered yet and feel free to look at this literature on this post-intensive care syndrome because people deserve some extra TLC as they're struggling to recover. But there is hope. And what would you like to tell folks about that as well? What information can you tell them to go and, and find that help? You know, Intermountain Medical Center, our... Uh, Center for Humanizing Critical Care has resources. The Society for Critical Care Medicine has resources. We're starting increasingly to plug people in to other people who have survived. So if you're struggling with post-intensive care syndrome, there is hope. There are increasingly clinics, peer support groups, public interest groups that are all, they've got your back. And it can be treated, and treatable. it can be treated. Thank it you so much for Thank your you. time here. Well, coming up, and here's more on our website at goodforutah.com. Glenn, back to you.